I'm Helen Rollison and I live at Tapa Pakonga. I'm a great granddaughter of James and Rebecca Ashby and I have been around in the area for 60 odd years. James and Rebecca Ashby, they came to the homestead in 1900, it was built in 1900. 14 children were able to live in the house. I lived in Tapapakonga until I was 13. James had divided the farm up in the 1930s for six members of the family because of the depression. And my father got a letter one day, and it was from Auntie Ellie, who we all call Lella. And this letter said that she needed help on the farm. She thought Dad, being a nephew, just married, would be ideal and they took up the offer to go half shares and they moved down to Tabapakonga in 1948. The homestead is pretty much original. At the beginning there were various outbuildings and um, the main structure is the house is still there. Yeah, well the boat shed I think was just up here where this tree is now. And the, the old cow shed was just across there. And the pigsty was on the other side. The house came down from Auckland. Yeah, I think it all came down on the Matakana steamer and brought ashore and erected. It was pretty much a kitset house and they had a builder to help them erect it, but Jane Jim Ashby and my grandfather Dick were the oldest two boys and they set to work with the builder and got it built as quickly as they could. And at that stage they had 10 children and I think little Emily had passed away at this stage and she lived to, for 10 months and the other children were born actually in the house. This used to be the schoolroom, and at one stage it was even the post office and then later it was converted into a sitting room and a bedroom. And here is James and Rebecca. Well Rebecca and James got married St Patrick's Day 1880. She was 17 and he was 25. James Ashby was a bushman and he felled trees within a wide area of the Oury area and was able to send them into Auckland for spars for ships or building houses. There was a huge demand. And he also sold firewood to Auckland for their homes. He also sold metal, which helped with the building of Auckland when this was shipped up to Auckland. The Ashbys were bushmen rather than farmers and this is what they were doing when they were used bullock teams to get the logs onto the the wagons and the bullock teams would bring the logs out or if they'd tripped a dam they would be able to pick up the logs with the bullock team and it's quite visible to see the slide just up behind the kiosk there's quite a distinct V where the logs came down. This Bahutakawa tree here was planted by James Ashby, or Grandpa as we say, when one of his granddaughters, Laura, was one. It's always been a central focus in the bay. The whole access really was by sea. There weren't any roads at this stage. Everything got shipped. Or they rode horses. There was a connection down the coast to Miranda. And of course they all rode their horses as the tide was hopefully going out. But it was all very remote. 
Well, the piano arrival was quite a thing. It was a great excitement, and they had to offload it off the steamer into the little whaler, manoeuvring the oars very carefully to get through the breakers. The boat was drawn up on the sledge with the horses, and they took it up to the house that way, and so I think it was no mean feat really, but um, yes, yeah, the sort of thing you'd only want to do once. It became a farm later on. There was a lot of work in the scrub cutting and the clearing of the land, and then they were able to go and get wild cattle that were roaming around in the area. And Rebecca had goats at one stage, and um, there were chickens and all various livestock to keep the family going, really. They pretty much survived on whatever was available. The older boys would have to go out shooting, or the nets would be out for mullet, which could be salted and preserved that way. And they pretty much relied on that hirery boat that I think originally only came in about once a month for the flour to come from Auckland, sugar and vinegar. They had an orchard and were able to grow fruit later on. So there were hundreds of jars of preserves. It was all about gathering food and being able to feed the family. Well, pretty hard work. And then, of course, they had their schooling in the front room at night for the workers, and the younger ones went to school in the daytime. The school desks and the slates and even the post office with the stamps, etc., would all have been in here. They made their own fun. They had a tennis court. They were into music. And they were always playing tricks on people. Whoever came into the area always, you know, got their leg pulled or whatever. So they made their own fun. Everything took place in here. The dining table was across there, and this was the lounge part where the fire was. Yeah, our grandfather used to turn up the bus used to come down from Auckland to Kaiawa on a Friday night and we'd be sitting in here <coughs> not expecting anyone and the dogs would start barking and yeah. he'd walked about a mile in his 70s, wouldn't he be, by then? Just come down for a month or a couple of weeks or so. Yeah. They felt that they could do it and it just yeah, opened door policy and they just came. It would have been, you know, home 